Okay, so I'm seeing the sage stuff, and certainly I'll read to that later. But I, what I want to do is I want to look back at this optional problem, and I realize it says you know optional problem. And what most people hear when they, they hear optional, they think to themselves, "Well, so that that's not for me. I, I don't want options. I just want to do the the least amount of work possible." And I, again, I, I want to warn you against this that you, you really, you may not know what you're competing against when you get out of college. And what you're competing against is, I always say is that um, you're, you're, you're dealing with a large group of people that want the same job. And typically when an employer is looking at someone, what they're looking at is they're looking at a skill set. all right? Now granted, they, they also may be looking at what university you went to, but I gotta be honest with you, nowadays, there's no guarantee of anything. All right, you could be going to the best universities in the world, and there's no guarantee that you're any better than someone fresh out of high school. I kid you not. I mean, if you look at Google, Google um, employs people, and they're pretty good at hiring people. By the way, so is Tesla, by the way. And really what they look for is they look for skill set. Now, granted, do they hire people that they believe has a skill set that don't have the skill set? Yes. What happens to those people? They get an evaluation and then they get fired quickly. All right. It happens quickly. Tesla is known to be a tyrant. Again, these are rumors where he fires people that may not even be responsible for someone else, for their, for, for their own incompetence. It might have been someone else's incompetence that caused me to get fired. Well, what I'm going to say over here is that you need to acquire a skill set in something. Whatever it is, you need to acquire a skill set. I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, have I been paying attention? to what we've been doing with Sage. I don't want to memorize too much though, but I want to see if I can do this problem now using Sage. So let me get my Sage. Let me just uh, reset. And I don't know, let me just try. So what do you got over here? And I got to see if I can remember. So I'm going to say N is a variable. I think you remember me doing this before, right? That's if you haven't paid attention. Assume n is an integer. I think I've done that before, right? Sum. I want to do this sum, but I'll certainly read it to you. And it says a sum minus one to the nth power divided by two star n plus one. Again, sometimes I don't remember correctly, but I'm going to say, I think I think I can remember four, but I have a key. If I can't remember, at least I know I got the wrong answer for n in zero. And where do they want me to go? And I have to read it to you. They want me to go to a thousand. And watch what happens. That's crazy looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go approximate it because I can't read that. And I get that number over there. But then I noticed they said they want 20 decimal places. So I don't know. I got, I, I got to remember. Do you remember that digit thing I was talking about? Digits, D-I-G, digits equal. Well, I want 20 more. I'm going to count them in front of you, though. Watch this. Let's count it up. One, two, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, right? Twenty one. I got too many. Let's go 20. And let, let's see what happens to that last number. Well, you notice that what I did, I did 20 was five there. What do they do? They rounded it. That's three now. All right. So what I want to do is I want to see, I wonder if I got it right, or maybe I'm just pretending I got it right. So let, let's scroll through this optional, right? Assessment key. I think I did okay. I see the number here. I don't want to go digit by digit, but I think you get an idea. I hope that if you did go digit by digit, that this number here would be this number over here. Okay, I think you, I think you can appreciate that. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back. I don't look at the key again until I have to. 
I want to see if I can do this over here. So it says use a computer to calculate 20 places. And then it says, you know, use Mathematica to get the exact computation to calculate. Well, you know what? I don't, I don't know if Sage could do this because remember in the past we had this trouble with typing infinity. So I, I want to go to Wolfram Alpha. All right, I think we've done this before, right? Wolfram Alpha. And I'm going to type that in. And I got that in from a prior problem, right? And let's just see if we can type that in. Minus one to the nth power divided by n. You also don't need a star, right? Math is a little bit better. By the way, this, this is Mathematica, but we're using Wolfram Alpha web-based application. And let's see if it can do it. Wow, pi over four. All right, let's go to the K and let's see if that's true. Wow, they got pi over four. All right. Then what does it say? Let's take a look at it. The series is given. Let's say we did the computer algebra system. I used Sage to do that. I was pretty good with that. I used Mathematica Wolfram Alpha. I did that. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Look back over your notes to see if I gave you this power series. I did. And then show that mathematical results are true. Here you need to clearly state what series is being used. Well, I guess you have to look back over your notes, right? And you need to verbally explain in English how the series is used to get the exact result. All right, so let's, let's scroll through. And again, this is, you might say it's optional. We did one, we did two. And it, it looked like it had something to do with the arctan. All right, look at something to do with the arctan. It was really the arctan of one, pi over four. All right, I want to go to the Sage code though, because I always saying that, you know, Sage has trouble, Sage has trouble. And I'm thinking to myself is, I want to do the Sage code for this. And in the past, remember we had this infinity problem with Sage? That Sage was, you know, couldn't convert that, that you know, when I kept saying, oh, ends an integer, ends an integer, ends an integer, and I couldn't convert it to this concept of an infinity. There's no such thing as, you know, like you think about infinity, you know, infinity is all over the place. Keeps going and going and going. Let me go back to Sage though, and show you that Sage can actually do those limits. Let me clear. And I'm gonna just simply um, reset again. I think you're getting a little better at this, right? X is a variable. I'm not gonna say assume X is an integer, by the way. I'll go through this stage by stage. And again, you may wanna go back over the prior problems we've done and say, you know what, I can do them now. And let's take a look at this one over here. The first thing I wanna do is just that sum business. And, and I'm getting a little tired. I'm gonna just copy paste. And we got that crazy looking number again, right? So I'm gonna dot n. I think you remember me doing that, right? So dot n digits equal. 20, you get that number over there. Same number we got before, by the way. By the way, they write this a little differently now. They put the N over here, they put the argument there and the digits over there. That's up to you, you can do that too. You can learn from that. I wanna try this one though. And this is something in the past we had so much trouble with. We had so much trouble with this, right? So let's, let's see if we can do this over here and let's just walk through it. It's really the same sum now, but X is not being restricted to being an integer. However, when I'm doing a sum, the sum knows we're counting. Where are we counting from? Zero. So it goes from zero to one, to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, to seven. And where's it gonna eventually end up? Infinity. It keeps going and going and going. Let's see if Sage can handle it. And it does, all right? So remember in the past, we had troubles. Now we have a workaround for these troubles. We have a workaround for it. And that's really nice to know. Right, that we have a workaround for this. Now, if you're wondering what the approximation to that is, you can approximate that well, uh, and you'll get that number that we had before. Let me just go through that with you. So a quarter is 0 0.25 uh, star pi. Remember, if I do that, pi is gonna be in the answer. I don't want that. So I'm gonna do dot n, and I'm gonna do 20 digits on it, okay? So digits equals 20. And what do you get? I want to point out, whoops, sorry about that. We're not getting the same number we have over here. This was, why is it the same number? This is the exact number, quarter pi. This is an approximation 
And where are we going? We're going out to a thousand. I'm going to start to play around with this though and see if I can get it to be a little bit better. So let me do this over here. And instead of going infinity, I think I want to a thousand. If you want to like 2000. And by the way, I'm just going to do, and I'm not going to say 20 digits, but I think you get the idea. You could play around with this. It's still not there, by the way, when you're looking at that. But you may say it, it, it may converge slowly and it does, but the bottom line is Sage can do a lot of work for you. It really can. Thank you.